All right, last time in H11, we looked at rate of change, and you might have seen the graphs that kind of went up and down and up and down. So now we're looking at constant rate of change, and now you see a graph here when you look at the change over in this area, you see this is the change over, in this case, night. So this is a pretty steep line, so it tells the length of the knit. In this case, she knits, um, depends on the num number of nights she spent knitting. Well, this makes sense. The more nights she knits, the more she, the more length she has. So again, for rate of change, we have this change in value over change in time. So this formula corresponds directly with the slope of the line. So that's simply how steep this line is. So if it were a horizontal line, that would have no slope at all. If we look, so again, because there'd be no change in this values, it wouldn't go up or down. If the line went uh, down like this, that would be a negative slope, so it's going down to the right. And again, if imagine her knitting looked something like uh, this. You can see, oh, she, the more she knits, the less length there is. So clearly she is undoing her knitting in this case. But So that would be a negative slope. Now, a couple things before we start with this. The slope is simply the rate of change, in this case a constant rate of change. So this change in y, well, we have value in time. Well, we are now kind of transposing our value in time onto this x, y coordinate plane. So we've got it, here's our y and our x. So this horizontal line is called the x-axis, this one right down here. And then we've got this one right here, which is the y-axis, that's the vertical axis. Now, we have lots of points on here that we can look at. Everywhere these lines intersect, that's a point. So we have a point uh, right here, another one here. All these little intersections are points. And we use a very particular uh, format for labeling. So let's take a look at this point here. In this case, we are going to use the point, the coordinate system, x, comma, y. And this just says, okay, this tells me what which point we're referring to. So in this case, I count over here 6, and I count up 3. So this would be the point 6, comma, 3. And now when I say 6, 3, you know exactly what point. For example, if I said 2, 7, where would that one be? I'll give you a minute to look and find it. So again, this is the horizontal. This is our x, which means we count over. 1, 2, and this is our vertical, that's the y, so we count up 7, so up 2, 7, so this would be the point, 2, 7. So that's the, what we'll use, that's the standard we will use. Now let's get rid of all those and get to the problem at hand. Okay, so now how do we figure out the change in y? Well, we've actually got to find a couple of points on this line. And again, we're going to use this x, y coordinate grid, so or uh, configuration. So I look on this one, I see it, I see a point right here. It's on the line. That's the point. Well, we go over the x. So that's zero, comma up one, two, three along the y. So zero, three. And I see a point here. And I also see a point here. So the question is, which of these points should I use? It doesn't really matter. But let's go ahead and use this one. So we'll go over 4 on the x. This is the point 4, comma, and we went up 9, 4, 9. So we have our two points. Now the change in y simply says, how much did we go up? Well, we do the same thing. In this case, we want to say y2, because this is the point number 2 up here minus y1, meaning the second point minus the first point. Remember, in the other one, the rate of change, if you watch that one, we had the final value minus the initial value over the uh, final time minus the initial time. So again, we have the second one minus the first one. Well, in this case, the second one happens to be this one, the first one. So You'll see in a minute, it doesn't actually matter which one is our first and second, but we just need it for consistency. Because what we're going to do on the bottom, so again, we, this is, tells us how much we went up or down. 
On the bottom, we need to figure out how much we went left and right, because the change in x is this horizontal direction as opposed to the vertical. So we start with our second x, x sub 2. We subtract the first one, x1. So notice that this we started with the second y, so we have to start with the second x. We could actually flip-flop these and say, OK, y1, not g. y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. And this would give us the same answer. But you will find, conventionally, we start with 2 minus 1. So let's figure this out. So this is going to be our second point, and this one is our first point. So we'll take y sub 2, which in this case here is y sub 2, so it's 9, minus y sub 1, which is 3. And we'll do it in a different color. Let's do it in black. So then we'll take x2. Now notice that these are the same points. So we've got to just use this one right here. 4 minus x sub 1. In this case, it's 0. So we subtract. 9 minus 3 is 6. Positive direction. 4 minus 0 is 4. Now the question is, is this in simplest form? It's not, so we have to simplify it. In this case, they each have a common factor of 2, so this reduces to 3 halves. So, the question is, she knits each night 3 halves centimeters per night. 3 halves centimeters per night, which is a little weird, so typically then we would convert this to 1.5 centimeters Per night. That is the slope of this line. It's positive because it's getting it's going up to the right. For each night she's adding one and a half centimeters. So if we look one night here, well she went from three centimeters in one night up to, oh sure enough, four and a half. We go over a second night and we have to go up one and a half centimeters, yep. And if we go over one more night, we go up another one and a half. So each one of these is over 1 and up 1.5, or as we saw here, 3 halves. So again, this is a constant rate of change. For each one night, she, it changes the exact same amount, in this case 1.5 centimeters. Now you'll also hear this thing, this idea of slope, referred to as rise over run, meaning how much did we go up or down, because it could be a negative rise, and how much did we go back and forth? So I always think of this as, you know, when you're outside your house, you can go up and down, right? You can rise in a balloon, but when you're inside the house, you can only run around uh, on a horizontal. That's how I remember rise over run. Some other people have pointed out that rise also rhymes with wise. So this one tells you, oh, what are the whys doing? Oh, they're rising in either the negative or positive direction. So there's a couple of little hints to how to remember rise over run. But that just tells us how steep is this line. And again, if we a horizontal line has a slope of 0, because there's no rise at all. And a line that goes down to the right would be negative, because it's going down with each uh, step over. So there's some basics on constant change. And we'll do one more example. Okay, so here is our next example. We've got our formula over here. Slope equals the change in y divided by the change in x. And as I said before, that is simply the rise over the run. So that is our slope, the steepness of the line is what that number is. The bigger this number is, the steeper our line goes up. All right, so the question is, we have total number of quizzes is ever taken in high school it depends on the number of weeks he's attended school this quarter. So the number of weeks is our x, is our x, total number of quizzes. So again, we're going to use this x comma y format. And we just need to find a couple of points. So I see this one right here is on the line. And that is the point, again, we can 
x is our horizontal, so we go over 20 and up 70. So this is the point 20, 70. So again, I, I see another point here and another point here. So uh, let's go ahead and use this one up here because this one is a little bit easier since we did that last time. So again, it doesn't matter which two points on the line you use because you'll still get the same answer. So in this case, we went over 40 and now up at 100. So again, rise over run, the change in y, that's our rise, is going to be the y sub 2 minus y sub 1. So again, the, f the second y and then minus subtracted by the first y, and the second x subtracted by from subtracted the first x subtracted from the second x, and that is our slope, which you'll often see written as m. Don't ask me why. Okay, so let's do this in a different color. We'll say blue for this one. So again, we're going to take y sub two and y sub one. So here's y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all over x sub 2 and x sub 1. So x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So on top we have 30, bottom we have 20. Now this can reduce to Oh, sure enough, 1.5 or 3 halves. But again, quizzes per week, 3 and three halves quizzes per week feels weird, so we'd say 1.5. And I just realized that this example has the same answer as the previous one. Now let's see if we had switched these around, what would have happened? So what if we had said 70 minus 100? So we did x, y sub 1 minus y sub 2, and... 20 minus 40. Well, 70 minus 100 is negative 30, and this is negative 20. Well, a negative divided by negative is just a positive, so we would get the same. We would we get the same answer. So again, 1.5 quizzes per week, and so in this case, it's hard to see, but that means that for each week, we, oh wait a minute, these are 10 weeks. So one week. We go up 1.5, we can't see that, but for 10 weeks, right, 10 weeks over, we would go up 15 quizzes. 10 and 15. That would get us the 1.5 quizzes per week. So again, even though our graph is by tens, once we find the slope, it's that slope is still per single week, per one week. 